Hi. Hi, everybody. Does anybody understand the reference, this title? Yeah? You're old. <laughs> so thank you. My name is Asim Hussain. You can find me on Twitter at jawache. I blog about Angular and JavaScript on my website, codecraft.tv. And I'm also a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. And I also co-run a meetup in London called the AI JavaScript London Meetup Group. I co-run it with my friend Eleanor Haproff. We started it early last year when we started to notice that JavaScript and machine learning were starting to integrate in very, very interesting ways. So we've been running this meetup for about a year now. And what would happen at the end of every meetup, somebody would come up to us and kind of say, hey, El, Asim, here's a really interesting link to a, a JavaScript AI-powered website or application. So what we did was we put all that together into a, a, another website called AIJS Rocks. And if you go to this website, you can find a whole bunch of different AI-powered JavaScript applications. And what I'm going to do in this talk, I'm just going to very, very quickly, I've only got 10 minutes, I'm going to very, very quickly go over three of the applications that, are in, that you can find on AIJS Rocks and kind of very, very briefly explain to you the high level of what's going on there. So the first one is the Mojifier. I wrote this one. It's not trademarked. It's just the Mojifier. I thought it was funny. Um, it does something incredible. Okay? If you give an image, it detects any faces in the image, and then detects the emotion in the face, and then finds the appropriate emoji and puts it on the face and pastes it back in. <laughs> um, it's available in a couple of different formats. You can find it on, uh, if you go to themojifier.com, you can actually add it to, to your own Slack workspace. So here's it working right now. Here's a picture of my son. Isn't he cute? But this is exactly how he mojifies. There you go. It works with multiple uh, faces. So there's that meme. Um, there we go. There it works. And it has finally answered that age-old question, which has plagued <laughs> people for hundreds of years. There you go. Answered it. <laughs> So um, there's doing quite, quite a few things, but how does it calculate emotion? Now, we actually do give workshops where I teach people how to do machine learning in JavaScript, and I can actually teach you how to train a neural network to detect emotion. But when I give these workshops, people usually come up after me, come up after me, come speak to me afterwards and kind of ask me a question, you know, I've got this particular use case I want to implement. How do I do that with machine learning? And I'm like, there's an API for that. Right? Every single cloud provider, we've all got APIs. We're all solving all these problems. I work at Microsoft, so we have an API called the Face API. It does a whole bunch of different things. But one of the things it does, and this is how it works, just kind of post an image to it. And one of the things it does, it can actually return for you all the faces in an image, plus the em emotions, anger, contempt, disgust, fear, happiness, neutral, sadness, surprise, value zero to one. Put your hand up if you have a beard. You can never be 100% happy. I'm really sorry about that. It's true. I've tried. You can't be. So that's kind of the first lesson. When you're, try, when you're trying to delve into this space, um, you, know, you might not be necessarily have to go deep dive into machine learning. Check for an API. A large amount of what we've been doing over the last year at Microsoft has been kind of commoditizing a lot of these services and making them very, very easily available to you. So number one, check for an API. Next demo, TensorFlow MobileNet, and I'm fine. It's made by a gentleman called Oliver Turner who's in London, we came to one of our meetups, one of my workshops, and afterwards made this application. This is just a, a simple code pen. Um, what it's doing is, uh, as you click on something at the bottom, it's doing a, a search on Unsplash for an image. And then the, the, the percentages on the bottom left-hand side is what we think is inside the image, right? That's not a very good one. But Puppies is good, I think. I think we recognize Terrier. There we go. So the interesting thing here is the only API request that's being made here is to unsplash for the image. The detection of what's inside the image is all happening in JavaScript in the browser. Now, it's using a technology called TensorFlow, which you may or may not have heard of. TensorFlow allows you to run um, new machine learning calculations you know, on, of, over hundreds of GPUs, hundreds of CPUs. It's written in C. It's very kind of hardcore calculation focused. Um, Start of last year, though, they announced TensorFlow.js. Yeah? I'm a JavaScript person. We love it when you add the .js at the end of everything. It's like butter. You know, plain jacket potato. 
like a potato and butter, better. Um, so it does a bunch of different things. Well, uh, how to use it, and this is the really cool thing about TensorFlow.js, is that this is the only dependency that you need. You don't need to install anything else. It's, it's TensorFlow completely rewritten from scratch in JavaScript. So that's all you need to do in order to be able to use it. Um, and there's a bunch of different things. You can train models. You can actually put in data, train it, do that kind of number crunching computational aspect. So you can do that. We can also do something else really cool. You can load pre-trained models that have been exported in a, in a certain format. There's now available on the internet, you can find like a bunch of pre-trained models that are available that you can start using. What Oliver used was something called MobileNet, which is a very famous kind of pre-trained model which, allow, which can detect one of a thousand things in the world in an image, just a thousand things. It's been, it's been optimized for mobile, you see. So that's what he used in four lines of code. That's basically gave you that functionality there. Pretty impressive, right? Um, the really, but you know, this has been optimized for mobile. It's, it's the size issue, right? If you really want to detect, if you really want to get, give a, get an image and really understand what's inside it, you need to use a much, much bigger model, which has been trained on much, much more data. Again, you can do that yourself. Or API, excellent, well done. So you can use an API. So there's another one we have in Microsoft, again, Everybody's got APIs like this. We've got one called Computer Vision. Um, and it can do a bunch of different things. You can give it an image. And one of the amazing things, I think, is it can actually give you a caption, a human readable sentence to describe the image. My friend Sarah Jasna actually created a demo to, to demonstrate this, which is quite useful. We're supposed to put alt tags in for, for images. So for screen readers, for accessibility reasons, you can always uh, have, a, have, have a description of the image if you can't see it. So she thought, wouldn't it be cool to use it for that purpose? So this is, you can just go to this code pen and try it out. Um, this is an image I put in, and that's the caption that came onto the top. This is a film, this isn't a film, TV series called Halt and Catch Fire. Anybody know it? Yeah, I love it. I have not watched the last episode. I will never watch the last episode. It will never end for me. Um, but this is what it tells you. It says Mac Mackenzie Davies, Davis et al. standing in front of a building. That's the actress in the middle. So it tells you a lot of very clever things about an image. Um, but as we know, Twitter is a very, very useful, helpful place. When she posted it on Twitter, some people um, let her know that it didn't work in certain situations. This image, for instance, star-filled sky, Texas 4. Didn't quite get that right. Uh, the next one could be right, could be true. You don't know. You don't know, though. That, that could be dead stuffed animals on a bed. You have no idea. Uh, I like the next one, because we're, we're half right on the next one. Half correct. There you go. <laughs> Pretty good. 50% is a pass mark in my book. Um, I'm not going to summarize that. I'm going to move to the next one. Image to image, one of my favorite demos. Uh, it's available on AIJS Rocks. This is running in JavaScript in the browser. Okay. You draw an outline of a cat. Draws the rest of the cat. Okay, it uses an algorithm called picks to picks at the bottom, which is a user technique called a GAN, a generative adversarial neural network. Um, and it takes as input an outline, and it generates an image of a cat. Doesn't just have to work with cats. It can work with human faces as well. Now the laughter stops. Yeah, it stops now. Human faces. Okay, but this isn't the picks to picks algorithm. This is a vid to vid algorithm. Right? This isn't running in JavaScript yet. Uh, how about this one? Um, the, the input doesn't have to be outlines. The input can be whatever you want it to be. You're training up a neural network. You can train it on, up on whatever you want. This input is a segmented image which gives you depth. Right? Again, she's not dancing. That's generated. Okay? The input can even just be text. Right? Top is text, the images are the outputs. Yeah? How far away do you think we are from somebody being able to type, create me an application, use this Azure reference architecture for an e commerce company based in Japan, we'll have this many customers? I don't think we're that far off. 
That's it. Thank you very much for time. I'm, I'm thinking of writing a book on TensorFlow. If you're interested, uh, take a picture of that and go on that page and uh, sign up. Thank you very much for time. I'm done. Yes, 10 minutes.